Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Lyle in the chat room was asking earlier, Chris, how can I write a good computer book, social networking on the internet, that will meet up to what people expect? Good enough so that I don't get ripped to shreds. Well, Lyle, uh, the video started with people saying no, and that was largely because I had just asked them if they had ever written a book before, computer or technology related or not. I've written a few in the past. And I think the bottom line is um, write what you know and own what you write. Uh, and I mean that in the strictest sense. Uh, if you don't understand a subject, you probably shouldn't be writing about it. And I realize the irony of this statement is that a lot of book authors out there really don't know what they're talking about. And that becomes blatantly obvious when you read a book about a subject you know and the author is just completely clueless. You've ever read a book or let's say, let's even take it back a little further. Have you ever read a, a magazine article or a newspaper article or even watched television and saw a program like a news program or, or listened to the radio and the person who was presenting or talking or writing didn't have a clue as to what they were talking about and you knew this. You just, you knew it. You could feel it. You could see it. They did not know the subject. It's because a lot of these people are paid to either regurgitate or to assemble or to just, yeah, to make crap up. Exactly, Mouse Boy. Not saying that everybody makes that kind of stuff up, but it was the case uh, a few weeks ago. Someone on CNN, the technology reporter, uh, was talking about Twitter and saying that you were limited to 150, or I'm sorry, 140 words. I'm like, uh, no, that would be 140 characters. So even the professional writers and the professional press don't always get their facts straight, not because they are put on the stage or platform or given that opportunity because they're experts, but because they're experts in presenting something. So if you've got a passion about social networking in this case, as you said that you wanted to write about, um, you know, just pour things out, uh, you know, throw out your ideas. It is in the case of both uh, Shell Israel and Robert Scoble when they started to assemble their book that was originally titled The Red Couch and eventually became Naked Conversations. They posted their chapters as they were writing them online and they were asking the world basically for feedback and, and to fuel the content. So, you know, they, they took that um, idea just to a level that I don't think anybody had ever seen before. Uh, when I wrote my book, my first one, on email publishing, which apparently is available now on Amazon for 15 cents, which is a bit depressing. Uh, by the way, you don't write books for money, that's for sure. Uh, you're lucky to make anything from them. Uh, when I wrote my book, I you know, wrote from what I knew. And when I reached a point where I thought I'd written everything, then I tossed it out to friends and had them contribute separate chapters to the book with full credit and it made for a more comprehensive book. So instead of just being from my perspective, yes, it was written by Chris Perillo, but vicariously, it's like what we do here in the chat room. It's people come to me, I'm a social network of one, but everybody here is connected to me in some way. In fact, uh, one guy, um, Jamora, I haven't talked to in years. I first met, met him, oh God, when was that? Years ago on ICQ. And he just pops into the chat room again tonight. It was crazy. Um, so if you if you don't know what you're talking about and you want to write a book, uh, it's probably not the thing for you to do. But if you do know what you're talking about and you want to write a book, it's a completely different story. You're going to need to get a good editor. And in some p in cases, if you can't find a publisher for that book, you know, publish it online, throw out chapters, see if there's any uptake, or blog about something. And then maybe a year from now, after you've assembled all this content, uh, compile it, and you may have a book at the end of the day, a book that's not just... Uh, you know your perspective, but also the perspective of the audience that had been reading you. There's a lot of ways that you can go about doing a book or writing a book, even if you don't understand the topic. Because if I don't understand something, the first thing I do is ask someone, uh, or ask someone who knows more, or might know more, or may know someone who knows more. It's not so much as important to know everything as it is know how to know everything, or know people who do know more than you do. So know your limitations. Um, now, I've also written other books, co-authored one with John C. Dvorak, um, also written a book that was kind of a compendium of all the tips that we did for uh, Windows XP and general computing. In fact, we ended up 
I've made more money off of selling ebooks online uh, than I have uh, ever se uh, selling or going through a publisher with real printed pages. So, ebooks, I'm telling you, after you've got your uh, information assembled, gnome tomes, exactly, Kevin. That's right. They still sell. They still sell, believe it or not. It's kind of crazy. You remember the original title? We ended up selling um, a package. Like we made it really these ebooks really cheap, and one weekend we made ten thousand dollars. That was Jake Ludington and I. Uh, it was his idea actually. It was a birthday package, and we sold ten ebooks uh, to our audience and made ten grand in a single weekend. So don't let anybody tell you that there's not money in in ebooks in self publishing. So what about everybody else's experiences? Have have you written a book lately? Do you want to write a book? You have any other tips for writing books? Let us know. We're here live. Dot Perillo. Dot com.